Donald Trump Jr., the executive vice president of the Trump Organization, the author of Liberal Privilege, and he's a white guy, wouldn't you know it? You could follow him on Twitter at Donald J. Trump Jr. or his website, donjr.com. Hey, Don, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you, Glenn? I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, want to talk a little bit about your dad and what the plans are. He is uh, hinting more and more that uh, he's, uh, he's going to be very involved, uh, to put it mildly, in the 2022 and 2024 campaign. Um, but first, let, let's just talk about some of the things uh, that are going on. The policies of this administration are, are clo- the walls are closing in on the average American. It's hurting them financially. We are we're seeing massive inflation headed our way. Um, you know, the, the beef prices are out of control. The government, you know, the, the president gave a speech yesterday about the new apparently AFT, not ATF, um, the new a- a- AFT uh, that is that going to have new regulations to uh, curtail the weapons that we can that we can actually buy and own. Your thoughts on what's well, happening? I, I think it's terrible, and yet it was all so predictable. I mean, liberal privilege. I literally wrote it about exactly what would happen. Yet the media, in their uh, role as the marketing arm of the Democrat Party, spent you know an entire eighteen months pretending that Joe Biden was going to be a moderate. He was going to be reasonable. He wasn't going to destroy your job. He wasn't going to destroy your economy. He wasn't going to. Do- raise energy prices by cutting off our own energy independence, which is also national security, not just economic. Uh, It was all there. And they told you it wouldn't happen. He was going to be moderate. But the reality, he's a radical. And if it's not him being a radical, whoever's controlling him, because I think if you've watched him give a speech, you realize that he's not in full command of his facilities. So whoever is in charge is the person that is a radical. And you see that every day. Now they're going to infringe on your Second Amendment. Last month, it was energy independence. Two weeks ago, it was kowtowing to Russia and Putin and giving them pipelines where you can't have them. You can't have the energy independence again. You can't have those American hardworking, well-earned, good-paying jobs. Uh, It's as though he's working for China and Russia, and this is what's going on. If Donald Trump had this sort of policy towards our enemies, the media would be outraged. But they're sitting there saying, oh, no, this is wonderful. You have a crisis at the border. The list goes on and on. The buyer is remorse. And again, this is coming from Americans who are still influenced heavily by a mainstream media that's so biased and is not telling you an objective truth to what's going on, they're starting to wake up and realize, oh, my God, this is what we got. The buyer's remorse is kicking in. And again, that's with everyone telling you that he's such a wonderful guy. He's totally in charge. When you have American newspapers saying, no, 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 Putin says Biden looked really sharp. He was really with it. Like, imagine the commentary that would have come from that if Putin said that about Trump. I mean, it's so condescending. Of course, Putin wants to negotiate with Biden. Biden's not there. Putin's eating our lunch and laughing about it. And the media is saying, no, this is a great, this is good for relations with Russia. It's, it's disgusting. It's despicable. I'm really, it needs to stop, but it won't. I'm really concerned. We had the right policy towards China. Look, you know, we can be friends to, with anybody, um, but we shouldn't be doing deep business with people who are enslaving their own people, um, setting up a, a, a gulag system unlike the world has ever seen, um, and, and is stated that they are going to rule the world, you know, in the next 20 years uh, if it takes them that long, uh, and that they are stated enemies of the United States. We're now deeply in bed. They seem to be calling all of the shots. And I I think Americans, I don't know what polls say, but I got to believe that most Americans were more in favor of your father's approach, which was hold them accountable and call them for what they are. A hundred percent. And again, you you see that. I mean, you have our scientists because I'm being told and for 18 months we've all been told you must trust the science. And yet the scientists themselves last week said, well, you know, of course, the Wuhan lab theory was always plausible. We just didn't want to be on the same side as Trump. You have Fauci seemingly disobeying a, a direct order to stop sort of some of the funding of the laboratories and the experiments going over there. At what point in time?
time, Glenn, was the Wuhan lab theory not the most plausible? We are to believe that the lab that studies Always. these exact viruses would not possibly, could not possibly have a leak. And if you did, you were a conspiracy theorist. You were thrown off of platforms. You were, you were cut out of the scientific community. But we're to believe that three feet out of the doors of that laboratory, someone ate a bat and got everyone in the world sick. I mean, are we idiots? Are we that stupid? And honestly, the next time they tell us to trust the science, could you blame anyone for being like, yeah, hard pass? I'm just I'm not going to trust the science because I don't remember learning science where scientific research is done in a way that is entirely influenced by a narrative of the media because people are worried. We, science was supposed to be about fact. It was supposed to be about results, not about a media narrative, not about a liberal narrative and not about stupidity, which it seems our scientific community uh, was basing all of these things on. They're either getting paid off by China. The same thing goes true for vaccinating our children. I mean, schools, the teachers unions, we can't do anything. The World Health Organization, which who I also don't trust. But you know, even they're saying, yeah, you probably don't need to vaccinate your kids. It's unnecessary. And yet the teachers unions are requiring it. What, what is the end game for all of this? I don't understand it. It makes no sense. If you play the statistics and look at it, people under 21, what is it? 99.997% survival rate. Now, that 0.003% of people who did die, while terrible, I imagine there's probably some comorbidities in there. Or, like so many of the statistics, they were hit by a bus and happened to have COVID. They may not have died from COVID. They died from the bus. But it was definitely a COVID death because that helped fuel the same narrative. What's going on in our country right now is absolutely ridiculous, Glenn, and someone's got to put a stop to it. Um, well, yesterday, the president uh, threatened – I mean, they – uh, Don, you know this better probably than anybody else besides your father. What you just said will be construed by the media and by now this administration as a threat. Somebody's got to put a stop to it. Um, yesterday, we oh, had yeah, the no. first conviction in the in the January 6th uh, worst attack on our on our republic ever. Uh, and the 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 person that they sentenced was a grandmother she um was was uh, pleaded guilty to a misdemeanor of parading in the capitol and she got i think six months of community service and a 500 hundred dollar fine <laughs> yeah it, it's ridiculous first of all the narrative around it is insane they're gonna do that i didn't see you know the fbi is posting a picture of someone who was taking a selfie you know, you know i don't see the fbi doing anything about you know, 12 months of looting, rioting, arson, murder, taking over buildings, because I guess it was woke, just like our military has gone full woke now. So they're, they're more concerned about your pronouns uh, than they are about maybe China's nuclear arsenal. That's what's going on. These people are entrenched in there. They could only care less about one side. If you were within 2,000 miles of the Capitol on January 6th and happened to be a conservative, you know, there's a chance they're investigating you. If you burned down a building or you took over a courthouse in Portland or Seattle, no problem. You get a slap on the wrist. Look at New York. You know, people who were literally caught red handed, you know, breaking into building arson, vandalism, rioting, looting. They're just dropping the charges. No problem. Again, what's going on is sick. When Joe Biden goes and says, hey, you're going to need nuclear weapons to try to take over the government. I mean, I look at that as a threat to the American public when he says something like that. I do if too. a conservative said something too. in in a opposite situation, they would be branded you know, as heretics, they would be seditionists for saying something like mm -hmm. that. Joe Biden can say it. No problem. He's 100 percent right. The double standard in the hypocrisy has gone awry. It's absolutely ridiculous. And again, it's just such a shame. And this is why, again, I still believe you need Donald Trump, because I imagine this is where you're going, because I don't know of enough Republicans who have the guts to say it to have the guts to take the slings and arrows that the media will say. It's totally nonsense, right? Let's not kid ourselves. I mean, what they say about all of those who are willing to fight is totally ridiculous. Trump's just the one that's not going to stand down because they do it. He's the one that's not just going to roll over because they say, oh, mean things about him based on total factual nonsense. Um, so you know, that's why Donald Trump is so important. I hope that he has woken up the other conservatives. I hope he has woken up those in the Republican Party to exactly what's going on. Unfortunately, after 50 years of just rolling over to the left and kowtowing to him, it's sort of ingrained so. in so many conservative leaders that we need to make sure 
that changes. I don't think there are conservative leaders anymore. I, re- I, I mean, name them in Washington. Name them. Yeah, just, just, you, you make a solid point, which backs up the point I was just yeah. sort of making. You know, I, I think you're starting right. to see it. But, you know, those people who are starting to do it and doing a decent job, you know, they get shut down on social media. They Don't forget, Glenn, we're not, it's not like we're in a fair fight. We're up against multi-trillion dollar industries. You have big tech doing whatever they can. I, can, I had, you know, 30-something million individual impressions on Instagram last week, and I lost followers. Like, you know, 250,000 likes a post. It's like, you know, you get a couple one day, and then they'll take it away over the next few days. I mean, what's going on? You don't have to be a genius to see it. You could be a, a very average, bad content leftist, and you grow like wildfire because they believe in what you're saying, even if you're not, you know, not someone who's going to create viral content or even decent content. But because you're agreeing with them, there's never censorship. They're not deplatformed. They're not demonetized. They're not thrown off. It only goes one way. When you're up against the giant of big tech, uh, when you can't search uh, information and expect to get a fair and balanced sort of answer in, in, a, in search terms. Uh, when you have the social media companies where so many people are communicating and getting information, but they're cutting off the reach of those on our side. When you have a mainstream media that's just, you know, just gone full commie, uh, you know, we're not in a fair fight, man. We're up against an incredible uh, adversarial force in terms of getting just even fairness out there. 